In this video we're going to talk about the Autowit Super Capacitor Car Jump Starter and we're going to compare it to lithium ion as well as to lead acid. This thing doesn't have any batteries in it so when you go to use it you actually need to charge it up. Now the neat thing is that you can actually charge this thing from a partially dead battery on a vehicle. So the battery in this particular truck is actually fully drained down to zero volts so you won't be able to charge it off of that but you can charge it using another vehicle or even just a regular USB port. The other great thing about the AutoWit and the Super Capacitor is that it's not really as susceptible to really low temperatures. This thing is rated to work all the way down to 40 below zero Fahrenheit. As some of you might have seen in my other video, uh, this particular lithium ion uh, jumper pack uh, didn't perform very well uh, at like minus 20. And that's mostly just because lithium ion batteries don't handle the really cold temperatures very well. So let's get cranking. Can you say super capacitor? Super Yep, that's right. Oh, this is the best kind ever. Orange is like the best color. Orange is a very nice color. And pink, right? Isn't pink your favorite? Yeah. Uh-huh. I can't tell. That's why I'm wearing pink. 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 Really? Pink. Oh. And pink. And we will wreck the car. We will fix the car. The vehicle that we're trying this on today is an old Chevy truck that's been sitting here for at least a year. I believe it's actually a little bit longer than a year that this thing has been completely abandoned and when you turn the key over nothing happens at all so I'm pretty sure it has a totally drained battery so what I want to do is kind of uh, crank over the engine using my uh, lead acid battery jumper pack and then the lithium ion jumper pack I'm assuming the truck's not going to start we'll find out if that's true or not but we're going to turn it over with those two as a comparison and then I'll show you how we're going to charge up the AutoWit super capacitor even though the truck doesn't have any power currently You want to get down? Yeah! Here, let's look at the engine. Come on. We'll start with the lead acid battery and get this hooked up first. Nothing even registered on the display of the jumper pack, so we know that the battery is actually completely dead. So let's go ahead and turn this on now. See the light came on behind us. So we'll just turn it over and see how well it's able to turn over on this lead acid battery. Daddy, with me. We're going to try to start it, okay? <laughs> So we gave the jumper pack a run for its money, it actually turned it over quite a while. The battery pack is drained to the level now where it doesn't have enough power to start the vehicle or enough amperage that is available. So we'll actually use this jumper pack to charge up our super capacitor here in just a minute and that's going to demonstrate really well how this is supposed to work. It can pull enough energy slowly from this jumper pack even though it's too low on power technically and still be able to jump the vehicle. I will link to all three different types of jumper packs, even though this video is specifically about the super capacitor, uh, just for you guys to be able to kind of pick and choose what you're interested in. Up next, we're gonna use the lithium ion jumper pack, and this thing is at 100% battery life right now, so let's hook this thing up and see what happens. So with the lithium ion pack, it actually turned the truck over much faster. I actually saw on the display before I started turning it over that it was rating 16 volts that it was putting through to the truck. It's important to understand the differences between these different types of jumper packs. This one right here you can actually temporarily use in place of a battery because it is a lead acid battery inside uh, and it's kind of more traditional uh, technology as far as the way this thing works. The lithium ion battery however that we just used, uh, you shouldn't really use that as a dedicated battery replacement because it pushes through a higher voltage temporarily in order to basically get the vehicle to start and it's designed to work in conjunction with a lead acid battery and basically level off the amount of power that is going to the ECM. You don't want to send 16 or 18 volts or whatever through to your computer module on your vehicle which is why it's important for there to be a battery installed when you do this test. 
Havla is gonna go fishing, and so uh, unfortunately she won't be here at the end of the video. So, Havla, what? tell everyone bye and, and say a thumbs up. Bye, Havla. <laughs> These are my sisters. Say hi. Hi. Three hi. of them. So we're gonna use the lead acid jumper pack to actually charge up the super capacitor here in just a second. But I did want to mention the other ways that you can do it. Uh, the first of which is to use an accessory plug from another vehicle and simply plug this into the cigarette lighter socket, 12 volt accessory plug, and then plug this into your super capacitor and you can charge your super capacitor up using a different vehicle. It should only take a few minutes. Uh, the other option which is much slower is to use the included micro USB cable and a power pack that you would use for like charging your phone uh, or just a regular USB uh, charging port of some kind and you can also charge it with that but I, that takes quite a while I think uh, 30 minutes to be able to charge it up to be ready to jump start your car with that method. So let's go ahead and get this thing charged up using our jumper pack and then we will go ahead and proceed and see how long it's able to crank over the engine on this truck. All right, so it says auto it, charging, volts 12.4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12%. So you can see it's charging up there. Uh, it actually gives you an active readout of the voltage of the battery that you're connected to. So in this case, the jumper pack that we're charging this uh, super capacitor up with is 11.7 volts. It says 11.9 on the display here. But either way, like we demonstrated earlier, this jumper pack right now is not able to start the vehicle because it doesn't have enough amperage available since it's drained down a little bit. So we're basically slowly drawing power into the super capacitor and we'll be able to hopefully start the vehicle. It's been already about two minutes and we're at 94% and once this thing finishes charging I believe it's going to give us an audible tone. All right, so now it says power on. We'll take these cables off here and connect them to the truck and see how long we can get this thing to turn over. Right here you can see that it's uh, at 15 volts is what it's going to be outputting, 97% charged. I left my other jumper pack connected to the battery of the truck long enough to where there's a little bit of voltage in the battery so that the super capacitor now recognizes that there is a battery in the truck. All right, we're starting our countdown. It's a 10 second countdown, and as soon as it's a continuous beep, we turn the key and hopefully away she goes. That was fairly short lived. Uh, I kind of expected it to turn over for longer than that, but in many ways it does kind of make sense. The capacitors really don't have the ability to deliver a continuous drain scenario for more than just a very brief amount of time. So what was that, maybe two or three seconds or so that it actually turned over? So it would put you over the top, but you definitely aren't gonna be able to sit there and crank on it and you know pump the gas pedal and try to get the old carbureted Chevy to uh, pop off for you. So to summarize, the Autowit uh, Super Capacitor Jumper Pack is great if you wanna have it in the trunk and have it uh, ready for scenarios where you just need to put yourself over the top a little bit and get yourself going again. The other great thing is that you don't have to keep this thing recharged. All you have to do is plug it in uh, somewhere when you actually need to use it. And hopefully that would be on the vehicle that you're driving because usually the battery isn't all the way discharged when you have a low battery incident. If however you want to be able to crank the engine over for a little bit, uh, this one right here is still gonna be your best bet. So I'll link to that below. As well as this, I really do appreciate AutoWit sending this over. Um, excellent tool for the purposes, but hopefully this video kind of shows you the limitations, the pros and cons, and aspects of things you might run into when you use it. I'll put a couple videos here on the screen where we went through and tested the lithium ion jumper pack in really cold weather, as well as when we compared a few different uh, lead acid jumper packs. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. It helps me out a lot, and we'll talk to you guys right over there.